Hey, how's everyone? Hey. Can you hear me? Hello, sure yeah. Share my screen. So, Elaine, you can help us uh, put the screen on. Um, let's see. Not look, um, so sharing my screen, guys, No, right? Yeah. Okay, there perfect. You there you go. So we'll give it a couple of minutes. Uh, what do you think? Give it a couple of minutes, right? Jeff, how you been? How's oh, everyone? Good. good. Excited for our chat today, for sure. Thank you everyone for coming. I mean, hopefully we can start soon. Uh, or first three at three. Uh, it's gonna be amazing today. I mean, it's been um, a dream come true to do this today, and hopefully we can do this every week. Uh, so, let's give it a couple of minutes so that other people can join, and we hope we can start soon. Um, anybody that is out there, thank you for coming. Now, this is going to be great. I'm looking forward to being able to just, you know, talk, throw some stuff out, see what the audience uh, has to think. And I know uh, we're all going to learn a lot through this. So this is going to be really great. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> oh, hi, Felipe. Thank you for coming. We'll have to get Felipe in here one time. Felipe, you're going to be yeah. here one day. <laughs> That's guaranteed. Take a couple more minutes. Take one more minute. I know. Super cool. Give me one more minute and we can start. See if anybody else. Okay. So thank you for everybody for coming for the first three at three. Um, this is a live show. Um, you know, we hope that everybody enjoys this show. It's about, you know, just some friends, uh, you know, three friends uh, talking about sharks and uh, about three visualizations. These visualizations can be from any data source. You know, it doesn't have to be cool or specific. It could be from a magazine, a newspaper, something that we, we, we found online, uh, any specific, of course, tools like Tableau, Power BI, um, anything that we like, you know, Many times, you know, as data visualization developers, we, we share things with each other. Uh, you know, yeah. we, we send it in a text or an email, and we like to share that because we want to tell others, like, hey, look at this thing that I found. I think we can use this here or there. So this show is about that, but in a live <laughs> setting, right? So today, we have three friends here, and we have three visualizations, and we have three questions. And this is going to be every day, every Wednesday at 3 p.m., and the cool thing is, this is going to be organic. We have we have not done this, you know. We have not rehearsed this or anything. This is going to be live, and this is the secret sauce. Every one of us here, the three of us, have one visualization, and none of us have seen the visualization before. What is the cool thing about that? Well, we want to capture the first reaction. That first reaction when you look at a visualization for the first time. What do you think? Do you understand that question? Um, and so we have three specific questions. Uh, question number one, you can put it on the screen. So the first question is, you know, like, hey, do I understand what is this all about? Um, also, is there any quick insights that I can gather? You know, right now, quickly, fast. Why? Because that's how you, that's how it is in a business environment, right? You're showing right. a visualization, you're showing a, a report, a, a dashboard, and you need to make sure that everyone understands that immediately. 
it cannot be something that people have to take hours and hours to understand. So we want to capture that in this show. We want to capture when you look at a visualization for the first time, do you understand what this is? And the second question is, is there anything that you don't understand? Is there anything that is confusing about the visualization? You know, we want to capture that, like, because what we found is different people will think different things about something within that dashboard or that visualization that they don't understand. So we want to understand that. We want to learn about that. And also, the last question, the third question is, hey, is there anything that you could change about that visualization? Is there anything, any minor adjustments can you do? And we're going to put something on that. And we're going to a little salt there is if you had to present this in the next hour or really, really fast, what minor adjustments can you make to that visualization? And that is exactly what three at three is all about. We hope to learn how to be more specific about asking questions about visualization. How can we make visualizations better from any source? It doesn't matter, right? It can be just one chart, but we want to present data in the right way. So we're going to do this. And uh, we're going to, some of them are from us. We're going to go first. We're going to present that visualization and the other ones are going to discuss visualization. Like I said, this is live. This is organic. This is like, you know, it's just going to be very open, uh, open discussion. And the first is going to be our friend, Jeff Baker. Uh, Jeff is a manager, an analytical manager at West Fargo. And then uh, Aaron Simmons from Data Meaning, senior associate from Data Meaning, and I will go last. And everyone, we one of us will, sh will share one visualization that we selected for today's meeting. Um, so let's start with Jeff. Let me, let me, uh, so, let me stop my, my screening. Jeff, I'm a little nervous. I like to be prepared. Put it in the chat. Uh, also, if you can answer these questions with us too, we want you to answer that in the chat. Put your stuff, yeah. anything that you can think of in the chat. Yeah. So, so for mine, um, what I wanted to do is something on the Olympics, right? So I was really looking for some really cool visualization on the Olympics. And so I actually have a couple of examples, but I'm only going to like highlight to make a point on these first few, right? And then I'm going to settle in on a dashboard that's by Adam Crane. And I'll talk a little bit more about that one in a second. But so here's my first sharing? visualization. What are, are you, you saying? Okay, good. Now, perfect. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, can you see that? So yeah, this now. is my my first visualization of, you know, the, the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Um, you know, again, to me, as a data visualization kind of guy, um, here we have a table, you know, day by NBC Olympics. So I would love to see something a little bit more. So I, I did a little more digging for something that's better. And again, NBCSports.com, here's text questions with text, a uh, couple of commercial spots for different things that I'm not interested in. And then, ooh, wait, here's right. I've got this really cool scatter plot, but it has very little meaning to me. And I'm kind of like, you know, are you, are you kidding? Right? So there's, you know, again, nothing great about what I'm seeing um, there. Not to pick on the folks at NBC. I know that they're great folks, but thinking about a specific data visualization dashboard i went to this one and what i'm going to say is this is by adam crane adam is the director of analytics and practices and enablement for plural site and he's a former former tableau zen master so you know adam is one of the best at this and he trains people on the art of tableau and dashboards so so um so i'm going to just Stop there, and I'll hand it over, and uh, you know, let um, Aaron kind of answer some of those questions about this dashboard. Jeff, are you able to scroll down there? Is there more to that dashboard? Um, there really isn't. That's pretty much it. Okay, that's the end. Okay, that's awesome. Very nice. I've never seen it before. Okay, I'm looking at uh, countries. Uh, probably the size of the circles are how many Olympic medals. Uh, can you hover on United States? Yes. So we'll see what that does. Okay, very nice. That's a great uh, um, visualization inside of a visualization. Uh, I know Tableau does a real good job at that. If you select uh, select uh, Russia, like a, like 
click on it. I want to see what it what, what that does. Okay, and they've got the uh, the middle count there in the bottom left. Uh, I like the I, I like the interactivity of of it. Uh, also, there's very little color here. Sometimes you can overcolor a report and keeping things simple. This is just black and white, except for the, the colored map inside of that, that tooltip. Uh, I like that feature. What do you like about it, Jeff? So what I like about this is just like you had mentioned, right? The simplicity of the coloring. Um, I like that there is a graphic here. Um, obviously this is for snowboarding. Um, so I, I think that the graphic is kind of cool. The circles are neat. It does have um, hovering built onto it. Although, to be honest, I'm not a super fan of hovering as much because too many things are happening. Um, so I find myself hovering and then trying to figure out what just changed, you know? Um, but I, I really like the, um, the way that the dashboard does work. When I first landed on it, this number at the top, I didn't know what that meant. You know, so I mean, I, I thought having a little text around what that number is, um, because the number is going to change, but it would be nice to know, well, what does five represent? You know, and of course, if you click on something, you see, you know, that's what it is. Um, in this case, there's, you know, two men and one woman uh, for a total of three for Fenland. Um, so I, that's, that's what I saw here that I really liked about it. Okay. What about um, you, email? Any insights? So I think, you know, I, I look at it and I'm, I'm thinking, okay, so this is snowboarding. You know, the, first, the first thing that came up to my mind is Olympics and snowboarding. So definitely that image right there in the middle, you know, it helps, right? Even yeah. if you don't see the, the title, that image, it's a great visualization, you know, idea of having something that you can relate on really, really fast. And then the circles... Um, I imagine it means, you know, the, the metals, but I'm not 100% sure about that. That's something that I'm not 100% sure. But if, I, if I'm if correct, then the United States seems to be the one, may, uh, you know, gaining the most medals for the Olympic uh, snowboarding, if that's true. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure. I love that it doesn't have a lot of color. So, and I love that it's simple. Definitely, I like that. The 24 on the right side, uh, I mean, I like it. Um, we can talk about that later. But um, I do I do like that it's simple. I like that there's not a lot of colors. There is a lot of good visualization techniques here. For example, a lot of white space, um, very simple stuff. I mean, I love, like I said, I love that image in the middle. It grabs my attention really, really fast. Right. Really like uh, Jeff, if you hover on, um, on the bottom left-hand corner, it's maybe the G's and the B's, NASA's gold, silver, bronze. Yeah, yeah. Does, does it do anything when you when you hover on that to know how many golds? No. Okay. It doesn't so that's, appear to. No. Okay. So that's the maybe one thing I would uh, adjust on here is uh, I like using the like a hundred percent axis to see mm -hmm. okay of uh, for twenty fourteen. What percentage were gold and what percentage were bronze? That may not make sense if it's a small number. Maybe it makes more sense if, if there's a, a lot, lot more data to show. And then maybe a, a, a band that at the top that ha has those counts for the gold, bronze, and silvers. But just maybe some more context around that would be helpful. Yeah. Put, put the second question, Alain. The second question and the third question. Yeah, we're already in the second question. So go ahead, Aaron. Yeah, so that, that that would be what I would was a little unclear of of uh, how many are each uh, unless you selected a country and then you could see what that breakdown is. But uh, having something uh, a little more visual there to, to be able to tell uh, what that count is is probably right. what I would the only thing I'd change. Uh, and the same point you guys are making that twenty four, and, and you know it's there, um, just to some context around what that number is. Correct. I, I think if underneath the 24 if you were to add a simple bar chart that had um you know a, a bar for gold one for silver and one for bronze like color just right underneath there maybe that would and you know in that bar chart area maybe that would highlight it or something um and and having that be really about the only color that's here right just add mm -hmm. that that colored scheme to a little simple bar chart might be all you would need 
Okay. Yeah, I, I'm the same way. I mean, I, the first thing that got conf it was confused to me, it was that number on the right third corner. I would, I couldn't figure yeah. out what is this number about. Um, yeah. so the number maybe needs something underneath, or maybe when you hover on it. If you hover, does it give you anything? Like on the five, on the five, on, on the oh. right side. Mm, no. So no, something maybe in the tooltip that can say, "What is this five? Is that five right. metals?" Or I'm I'm not sure what that is. Um, so the other thing is, you know, and right now, so you know, another thing that you could do here is add maybe something. Oh, here. Okay, uh, we're just looking at something like that, or something like a rank that I could see. I mean, I, I like that bit. That's a bit in the tooltip right there. I really like that. It looks yeah. really good. Um, but I think there, there may, you know what, it, what it could, you could do here is maybe something <laughs> else where you can hover and tells you like how to read, right? So it's like if you add uh, like a best practice, if you add something here on top to say how to read, and then you can yeah. know how to read these charts and to read the different things that are here. That could work better, yeah. Um, I think and that's the, some of the minor adjustments that I will make. But overall, I love it. I mean, I, I know him. And he's, he's a great visualization developer. Yeah. Also, if anybody wants to add any comments, uh, Felipe, what do you think? Do yeah. you understand anything that you will change, Felipe, over there? And anybody uh, that uh, wants to add anything for us to to mention? Put it in the chat. I think I thought of two things. Uh, one, you see there's a couple. When you hover on there, you can see there's some that are blank. I, I'd almost want to just see ones that have a count on it. I know like in Russia, there was uh, half of them were blank. Uh, right. For me, I, I wouldn't want to see that at all. I'd only want to see what's what's relevant. But I okay. probably understand why you left it there because you can see like we've never gotten any medals in those, those categories. The other thing right. I would add is uh, in the lower left-hand corner, he's got the, the medals by year. Um, or maybe a filter at the top that lets you select. Like, I want to see how how everybody did on this map in 2010. Yeah. Um, I want to see how everybody did in 2016. Maybe you could see pockets of like it was it was great for one country, and then the next they had nothing. So that would be interesting to have too. So Aaron, there's something here there for you from Michael Perello. What do you, what did he got? So I I get the I definitely get that point because it's like in your face. It's right in the middle. And it's the only dark thing on the screen. So everything else is kind of uh, muted and, and a little uh, grayed and kind of in the background. Uh, my guess is that the reason he, he wanted to make that big and bold was to emphasize that he, he, you're looking at Olympic snowboarding specifically. Okay. Uh, I, I, maybe maybe tone that that uh, tone down a little bit and make it a little more transparent so you can't see it. But uh, I, I definitely get that. No, definitely. That's a great. That's a great. Uh, that's a great idea, Michael. Um, he also said that country metal comparison is difficult in this type of biz. That is true. That is true. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with that. I thought about the same thing. Um, you know, more than I think about this uh, image in the middle. Um, correct. I really like this idea. Put the a snowboard behind the map. Thank you so much, Len. Oh yeah, that'd be good. That's yeah. a great idea, Len. Yeah. One of the things that I, I could tell everyone, uh, we were we had a um, a meeting with Ben Jones in our uh, Tableau user group, and he showed a hockey player, right? But the hockey player was like Len is saying behind the visualization, right? Is that correct, uh, Jeff? Yeah, that's like exactly right. We have Diogo saying that. Some transparency of transparency of this no border image has also works. Thank you, Diego. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, just keep putting whatever you guys can think of. This is the idea. This is exactly what we're looking for yeah. in three at three. You know, th this show is about you. Actually, we want you to be part of the show eventually, yeah. right? We want yeah. you to be like one of the three of us and you present your visualization and everybody can talk about it. And this is exactly what we're talking about. You know, we want to like, if this is your first time looking at this, what is your first impression? Do yeah. you understand? What do you think? Will you change it? What would you like and you don't like? Exactly that. Thank you for, for, for adding those comments. Anybody else have any comments? Thank you, Michael. Um, but definitely we think that the, the, you know, the image in the middle, is just too distracting. Uh, it needs to be more transparent. Uh, maybe smaller. Right. Um, yeah. 
Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? We, we can go to the next one. Um, Aaron, uh, just show, show your screen. So, guys, get ready. Mike, Diogo, Len, uh, everybody, Felipe. Oh, wow. All right, so here's what I got. I found oh, this wow. on, on The Economist, economist.com. They, they have a, a great selection of data visualizations. Uh, I don't Ooh. even know what tool this is. Um, okay, I, I, I particularly use Tableau for the majority. I don't know if you can do this in Tableau or not. So <laughs> if anybody out there knows like what tool this looks yeah. like, let us know because it's, it's really interesting. Um, Jeff, what do you think? Um, I mean, so at, at a glance, it's a little bit hard for me to see any of the detail on this yeah. chart, right? So I can see that I've got some kind of a line chart. It looks like... Um, you know, at some point in time, there was a significant, you know, change. Some event occurred, um, but again, it's uh, it's pretty hard for me to read on the on the screen. To be honest with you, man, this is good. This this is a good one, Aaron. You did a good job. Yeah. So I, I, hard. I this is hard. We want to talk about this ones. Right. So the reason the reason I did this one because, like, again, I I never seen anything like this. Uh, yeah. but, but I like, I like the concept, uh, you know, you have these channels here, which is the, uh, 95% confidence interval and you've got them for each of these, what are probably political parties, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and you can see this huge jump here. Like I, I thought it was interesting that, that you, it, even though there's a lot of colors here, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, I like that, like as you scroll, it gets a little brighter on the left-hand side, but as you go backwards, yeah. it's like, that's the future. So it's, it's a little muted as you go that way. Gimiel, what do you think? So what I think, you know, for me, it's, 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 it's a little bit hard to read. It, it's definitely difficult. Um, I do like that it's one chart. I do like that there's some white space. But what I'm confused, I mean, it's, this is very interesting. I'm, I'm not even sure if this is what they're trying to do. So you see there is like a range on yeah, right there. You can see it better, right? There is like a range between the band of the, of the so you have the line and you have kind of like a band, but I'm not sure what is it between the bands. Is there anything that you can tell me about that? What is no. between the the two bands? So that's something that I will explain, right? So um, they've got they've got that these sure. dots these dots are individual poles. That's all I got. Okay, okay. So is and then that, that like a, I don't know, like a variance or something or like a. Well, I'm trying to see, but I'm not yeah. This sure. this band is um, the 95 percent confidence interval, and then each oh, one of these okay. dots is, okay. the, is the pole. Okay, yeah. I understand now. Okay, I understand. I think there is, you know, it may be the the way that is the, the band. If it was just one color instead of it, it looks like it's wash, right? Like each one of the lines looks wash or something. And I think that's distracting. I think Michael Perello said in the chat. They need to organize the layout, the metrics better. My eyes are moving all over the place. I think he's right. Yeah, I'm moving all over the place. Thanks, Mike, for that. Um, anybody else that wants to say anything in the chat, please add, add over there. Add it. Um, the other thing that I, I don't understand is, you know, some some of this font is really light, so I cannot even. I, I'm not, or maybe it's just too small. I cannot read it. I cannot. I cannot really read it well. I'm not sure. Um. So okay, and then I like that functionality, right? When you when you move, it gives you that uh, kind of like what is each line uh, tooltip, kind of like you can see it right away, or what what did each line have as, as a metric. Uh, but I'm not sure. And then you can select between the past twelve and 2017. Yeah, so it's like they're zooming in on you know this right this there. section right here. Okay. I mean, I don't know. I, I maybe, maybe I'm trying to figure out, like, you know, I know maybe too many colors. Yeah. What, what, what do you think, Jeff? Did Jeff is still? Well, I'll say for um, for me, what, what what I would like to see is like uh -huh. I, this is uh, politics in Germany. I, I don't know anything about that. It would be nice to know at least some kind of brief definition of what all those gotcha. AFD, FDP, SPD. I don't know what any of those are. Uh, and maybe that's not relevant if you're a German uh, citizen and you understand the politics there. But if, for someone not understanding specifically what mm -hmm. these are, uh, some kind of a, a maybe a, a little hover here where I can get definitions of what everything is so that it, it's a little clearer what I'm looking at. Okay. So, Jeff, do you have anything to say? And then we can go to Michael Perlis in the chat. 
Jeff, anything? Yeah, I mean, my first glance at this, um, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. can you hear me? Yes, yes. yes can hear uh, my, my first glance is just to better understand what it is. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah. So I bet. Okay. Yeah, we yeah, can hear you. I mean, yeah, I, I think I I think if I went to the article, we may just actually tell you what this is. But it's just it just this one line just says it's a poll tracker. So it's hard to tell like what what you're really looking at. Yep. Okay. Right. Right. You you're, you're right. I mean, uh, okay. So we have let, let's go back to the chat, guys. Phil uh, Michael Perl said feels like a traditional. Uh, popularity poll chart with confidence band, but it's difficult to read and understand. He's saying that how many people are polled, what events may cause this up and down strategy. Right. I mean, that's actually right. I mean, what is it causing that? What is it causing the goings up and down? And I'm also, I don't know what all these things mean. Uh, Len says, seems like it should yeah. just be a line chart. The plus and minuses area yeah. around each of line is too difficult to read. Does it add any value? Right. He says no. So take out. Take out. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And the other says, I, I like the chart. It will be nice. Uh, a nice page in Tableau story, and aligned uh, with some complementary views. Yes, you're right. You're yeah. right. Maybe it needs, it needs other views to make it work. The yeah, other. You're right. Um, yeah. But I agree with Len a lot. I mean, I don't like that confidence band. It just gets me a little bit. I mean, I think right. one thing that we could do this this report is to have a toggle that takes out the 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 confidence band, so you can put it in or put it out, and that way it's easier to, right. to look at. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah, there's probably too, you know if you're gonna have these confidence bands, mm -hmm. you have I think you have too many lines in order to include them all. So mm -hmm. it's almost like you need yeah. to select just two. If you're gonna leave them in there just have a, a choice to choose between two otherwise like down here you can't you can't tell what's going on down here because they're all mixed in together right very good you know what else would be nice is that kind of like in, in the tool tip how you can um enable uh it to do values and stuff it would be mm -hmm. nice if you hovered over it if, if you need confidence intervals if it was something that you could select like you know, let me drag over a certain segment of that and then show me the confidence and in intervals if that's something that I really need for this. Got it. Got it. So, is there any anybody anything that you could change? Anything else? I mean, we we, we already mentioned a couple of things that we will improve or change. Anything else? I mean, for me, is I will take the band out somehow or or have something to put it in yeah. and out. This is too confusing. And add other, maybe another visual like Yogo say, on the side to make it easier to understand. Right. Yeah. I'd increase the font size too on the top of this so that it pops a little bit more what the story is, what you're trying to do. Yeah. You can also put this uh, maybe together with a little bit, with a little, you know, you've seen in some of these magazines. Uh, maybe they have a, a paragraph on the side, right? Like Aaron said, something that is, uh, when you're reading this, it makes sense, right? You're, you're understanding what is this all about? Maybe like a summer yeah. on the side. Or something. Yeah. 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 Great. So Diogo said, remove the dots from the bands and you will have something better. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah. The, can see exactly. that too. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. Awesome. So, you guys ready for... Yeah, hey, what do you got, email? Let's go. Let's see. Um, oh, my guys. Let me see. So, mine is related to something that is happening everywhere in America right now. Back to school. Back oh, to yeah. So let's see. And I found this. I want to make it a little bit larger so you guys can see. Wait. I think that's the full screen. Oh. Let me see if I can make it a little bit larger so you can see. 
don't know if you guys can see it there or yeah okay 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 yeah perfect thank you Elaine it's good so this is from Tableau Public back to school trends wanted to bring you something the back to school it's actually uh using you know the storyboard of Tableau but it's a little bit more here so we can go here for example see and i think it's the same kind of like the same visualization and i just wanted to bring something you know i was looking for something back to school something the olympics back to school i thought that this one was great because it's just going to make us think about everybody i think is thinking about back to school right now if you have kids so um jeff you go first what do you think so elaine question number one Uh, so when it says, you know, what what do I think this is about? The title tells me it's back to school shopping trends. Mm -hmm. And then I see average weekly visits. So I'm immediately thinking visits to the store, visits to what? You know, so visits mm -hmm. by age demographic trend line. You know, so uh, I'm a little curious as to visits to what exactly uh, I'm looking at there. Um, visits by age demographic data range, you know, I'm getting a perspective, but I'm not really sure what that means. Now, maybe I'm sure in the text along the sides, it, it probably gives us that. But my mm -hmm. first glance, I am I know I'm looking at back to school shopping trends, but I'm having a hard time relating what that line chart and what that little graph chart there is actually meaning without having to start reading a little bit more detail. Okay, so I see the second one is almost the same, Aaron. So you guys know I'm and Jeff. And then at the end, we just have kind of like very specific uh, trending keywords or things that that probably you're buying, you know, things for your kids and you're buying like sporting goods and accessories or things like that. Um, right. So, Aaron, what do you think? What do you can tell me? <laughs> I, what I, I actually like the... Although I don't completely understand the age group portion here, I like that uh, they gave insights for those age groups underneath it. Okay. Uh, a, lo a lot of times, all we all we want to do is display numbers. Like, look at this number right. on this chart or this table. But mm -hmm. to provide insights of what these numbers means ha sometimes has more value to to people when they need to understand the context behind it. Got it. Got it. So Len Len said. I wanted to do anybody. Hey, put it up there, Michael, uh, Yogo, and Len. Thank you very much. It will be nice to be able to select all age ranges in order to compare trends between all age groups. I love that. I love that. I really like it. Yeah. I really like that. Thank you, Len. Um, so for me, I like that it's simple, just two colors, right? Like yeah. blue and why and if you select um any other it's just going to be always going to be two colors right um now at the same time like len said if we maybe having some of this uh selector or like uh let's say that you can have a drop down where it's going to be like you where you can select multiple of the ages maybe you can compare one to the other because right now i don't i, I don't know um it's, it's a little confusing in that way and I like the white space. I like that they use the storyboard. Um, but like, it is, like you said, like everybody said prior to me, there's a couple of things that I'm not sure. Um, Michael Perlo, thank you very much. He says, I think the shirts are nice looking and easy to read, but it fails short on storytelling and seeing the big picture. Correct. Uh, so that is true. That is true. I mean, you know what I think it needs? What about if we add some bands somewhere, like call out numbers, something that, you know, here you have to kind of like read all of this, look right. in the middle. Uh, you, I'm not getting any new, any fast insights, nothing, no, no quick insights. It's just like at least it's wide, it's a lot of wide, it's a lot of like, you know, very specific color, but it's just, I don't know. That's all I need. But I do like that they use the, they try to use the storyboard here. Email, can you go to that last tab there? Okay. Let's see. Uh huh. Just real quick, I, I'm not even looking at the chart. My my uh -huh. first thought is, what do those colors mean? 
and they put the legend in the far bottom right hand corner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, again, for me, I want to I want to know what those colors are before I even look at the chart. Mm-hmm. So I mm-hmm. probably move those up a little higher, so so you know immediately what you're looking at. What you're looking at. Exactly. And and this, um, when we see this spike, Jeff, is there anything that you can think about that and that that spike in the middle? It seems like it's uh, August, of course. It have to be August, right? It's like right now. Yeah. yeah. That that's good because this is you've selected backpacks and by mm-hmm. by after that peak everybody's in school so they've already bought their backpacks for the for the most the part back yeah <laughs> yeah that's how that's I would read that point. yeah I I think um, what it's interesting is that maybe this is saying hey people start buying since June which it's very early right I just selected all since June. I, uh, to be honest with you, I almost I always do everything at the last time. So I'm buying it right now, pretty much. Mm-hmm. But, um, <laughs> but the thing is, it, it's pretty interesting to, to see that there is actually a, a big spike here in June. So, you know what's confusing me though is uh, I'm looking at the word backpacks, and I'm seeing two line charts: one that says apparel and one that says sporting goods. Mm-hmm. So does that mean that there's two different kinds of backpacks? You know what I'm saying? So what's really happening on those two different line charts? Yeah. I'm starting yeah. to feel like I want to export the data to go look and see what really is there. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. <laughs> we also talked about having the age groups, being able to compare those on the yeah, first page. Mm-hmm. And if you did the, you could do the same thing on that last tab. If you wanted to do two different uh, categories. Exactly. Yeah. Um, anything else that you guys like or felt like you can mention about, and then we can go to the last question about, uh, for example, what, what can we fix? How can we improve anything else? So Aaron, uh, what, what, will, what will be, oh, do you have something, Jeff? Yeah, uh, I had something, um, the, all the late, all the, uh, X axis labels of those dates are, you have to turn your head this way in order to, to read them. Yeah properly mm, so i would I, I always advise against doing that un, unless your client says that's the way i want it uh you know i think best mm. practice is that make sure that you can read it without having to make your your end user work yeah so i love this this uh thank you len i mean you're len you need to get with me after so we can <laughs> put you in the put you here in the in the show um seriously i'm being seriously seriously yeah Just get with us later uh, on the first page, reliability is difficult with the selectors on the right. Feel like my eyes are moving left, right, up, down instead of a natural Z path, right? That is absolutely true. I mean, this this flow can be better, right? We can we can yeah. make it better. Um, and Michael Perrell has something really cool. Yep. I mean, I, I I love that. I, I love to use that on my dashboards too. Yeah. Um, he was thinking about why we don't use some icons for visuals yeah. for, you know, maybe the backpack and the many different things that you're buying when, when, when your kids going to school, back to school. Yeah, we can do some of that. Uh, he's saying that it could be more visual as an infographic. So absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Aaron, anything minor adjustments that you will make, you could make here if you have to present this like in one hour. You had a meeting, and you have to go and present this uh, in one hour. What, what will that be? Yep, I would, uh, I would make that a multi-select for the age group, and mm-hmm. then on the last page, make that a multi-select as well, and then move that legend up to the up to the top so it's easier to see what you're looking at, and probably get rid of the two colors on that last page. I don't know if you necessarily need to to separate them by those two that, that, uh, that they had. Okay. Okay. Jeff, anything that you think that you will make a quick adjustment, you have to present this information to your, to, to your vice president of back to school shopping trends in Wells Fargo. People are buying it with your Wells Fargo <laughs> credit cards. That's right. That's right. And uh, yeah. Yeah. What you, you know think? what I, some of the things that stand out to us are, are really kind of simple things, but they can be really powerful. One would be to create a little bit more white space in here. 
Um, you know how, how tight packed all that looks? It makes it a little harder to read. So even if you added just some blank spaces in there to move this out a little bit and make it a little bit more visually appealing, um, something like that would be great. I know the comment that Aaron mentioned about, you know, adjusting the dates so that they read uh, correctly, you know, I guess, you know, in the right way. <laughs> but I mean, so to me, just more readability things would be something I would call out here. Okay. Uh, Len said, I will reduce the intensity of the text to a dark gray instead of black, too high of ink to data ratio. Absolutely. Mm. Wow. So, awesome. Awesome. So in data visualization, you know, this, there is this, I mean, and we're going to work on that in this show of slang, right? Uh, for example, too much ink means like, you know, maybe it's too dark, too bold, uh, things like that. And, and he's right, you know, that maybe... You know, by by doing these minor adjustments just in the font um, font kind of like color, that could make a big difference. Uh, I agree with that hundred percent. Um, for me, I think it needs some on the top some type of uh, call out numbers. I mean, there must yeah. be some type of uh, kind of like a summary on the top, something that I can get really really fast. And it doesn't give me that. I have to read the chart. I have to read all of this here on the right. But it doesn't have. I was. I think it needs some type of uh, call out number, some bands uh, around it, so that I, or, or at least on the top or on the left side, going down, where I can understand. Okay, this is the most important information. And then this that you see in the middle is just for me to you know start kind of like going deep into a little bit more deep into the data, more like detail. But I'm a little bit lost trying to. It takes too much effort just to understand what is the really this is telling me. What what is, what is it here for? for what what is the data saying? You know, I think that's that's one of the things. Um, also, I noticed like Aaron, you know, like these dates are hard to read. Um, and I think the other things is just uh, it's it's almost the same across the the whole dashboard, right? This is almost the same thing, and this is just. This maybe not, it doesn't need to be here. Maybe this need, could be with the other ones, right? So we don't have yeah. to make the, the user go to three different tabs here. Um, things like that, uh, I will change. Uh, but I think it needs a little bit more of storytelling. Yeah. 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 Anything else? Anybody wants to add anything on the chat? We're almost there. We're almost done. First time. First three of three. <laughs> I'm pretty excited. We're almost done. Um... Anybody else? Um, I think that's it. Um, I want to encourage everyone, you know, follow us on LinkedIn and YouTube. We're going to do this once a week. We're expecting uh, people like you, those who are watching. Len, please get out with, get with me, Michael, everybody that participate. Uh, you can be here. You can bring your own visualization. The one that you found online. It doesn't have to be Tableau. It doesn't have to be any tool specific anything it's available and you we can share that and all we were looking here is to learn between each other you know right now for what i for what i can see you know each one of us are looking at this a different way each one of us even the people that were in the chat and the comments uh found things that i didn't thought about okay so and that's the idea we want to learn this we want to you know all of us i'm learning too you know and i've been doing this yeah. for a long time i'm learning too and and that's what i want because you know, most of the time, think about this. You create the most amazing visualizations in your life, and then you take it to your team, you take it to your to your uh, to, to your vice presidents, to the executive in your company, and no one is using your visualization. No, it's not using it. The, it's, the adoption is becomes low, it fails. But why? Because we have didn't have this conversation. Because we are not doing this. We we need to figure out how to to understand different perspective of how people look at data. And that's what we want to do in this show. You know, it's just how can we make the visualizations that people will use that make sense. And that's what we're trying to learn here. Um, anything, Jeff or, or, or Aaron, that you learned today that you like? What, is, what was your favorite of the three? What was your favorite? Go ahead, Jeff. Well, I think um, I, I liked Adam's dashboard the yeah. snowboarding dashboard i thought it was really cool it added in some of that 
you know, I, it's fun to look at it and it makes you think a little bit. And so I, I really like that one. Um, mm -hmm. I love the content of being able to come together as data visualization people and mm -hmm. look at something, you know, we, we don't, um, you know, we don't want to point out that somebody's not done something great or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, the whole idea is just that, just like you said, Emil, talking about it, asking questions, what did somebody else see? What does someone else think? You know, that's going to help us. And I know I've learned a lot just from going through today's show on thinking about things like the font color, like spacing, you know, the date ranges, all of those kind of things. So, you know, throwing it up on the board and starting to ask questions about it, even if you're like a great Tableau Zen master or if you're, you know, just like us, everyday developers trying to, you know, make it happen every day, um, mm -hmm. something that you can walk away from and where else could you get that kind of a, you know, opportunity. So it's fabulous. Exactly. Really like that. Yeah. So land like love the snowboarding dash. I think that's the winner, right? I love the long, the snowboarding dash too. It does need some things that we all thought about, but it's, it's, it's really cool, right? It's really cool. Yeah. It, it makes sense that it comes from a, 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 a Pablo Sen master or a previous Pablo Sen master. Adam, I mean, he's amazing, yes. and and it makes total sense. You can see that he's using some, you know, data visualization best practices. But I, it's also my favorite. You know, it's also my favorite. I will, I will, if I had that one, I will just change it a little bit. Uh, but it, it's a great dashboard. So, what, Aaron, what do you think? Well, I, that's a good point. You know, the the one that we all agreed is probably the best of the three, in our opinions, was from somebody who's a professional at this, and there were still yeah. things that because of we're looking at it from a different lens are, are not probably things that he had thought about, um, which, which goes back to, you know, you know, Yamil and I, we both work here at data meeting. Uh, we work back and forth on different visualizations. Like, Hey, what do you think of this? Hey, what do you think of that? Cause if you just exactly. sit in your own bubble and say like, you know what, this is great. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm awesome at this. And then you give it to people and they're like, uh, what am I looking at? Because you didn't bounce ideas off of, to, to get other opinions. Uh, so de definitely I'd suggest that for people, you know, don't, don't just, think that you've got it down, uh, get some, some feedback so that you can make adjustments and, and uh, do it for the, the bigger picture. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I, I think that's the, the, the main, you know, and we're going to have nice cool shirts too. So here a little bit nice shirts that we created for the show. So everybody, hopefully you like it. Uh, so Len, if you want one of these shirts, you have to come to the show. So, <laughs> um, so definitely, um, you know, I, I think that's the, that's the thing, you know, it's like, you know, when we work as a data visualization developer, you know, we talk with each other. We, we do actually, the yeah. same thing that we're doing in this show is that we do what we do every day. We may do it in, in a Slack or in Teams and we, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Uh, do you have any idea for this chart? I, I, don't, I don't know, I'm blocked right now. Um, and that's what we're trying to do with this is how can, how can we take that that we do every day or every time? I mean, you know, sometimes we have people like you know, Frank Christopher who posts uh, Wall, and from the Wall Street Journal, something that he saw, and he's like, hey guys, what do you think about this? I don't understand anything that they're saying here. And, and people start talking about that and, and giving their perspective. That's what we want to do in this show. Because we th I think, you know, I'm a believer that learning from others that are on the same level, you know, because we're all on the same level. We're not Zen master. We're not like people, academics that are writing books and things like that. That's how people look at data. That's the reality. That's those, those are the people that are in the business side, working with dashboards, creating visualizations. They're people like you and I. And that's those are the people that we want here in this show to give their perspective, to tell us how they're looking at data every day. Yeah. And then we hope that we all can learn something. And of course, our friends in the chat, uh, you know, like Len and Michael Perello and Diogo, and, and and Felipe, they can give us, you know, like whoever is in the chat can give us that another perspective. That's a bonus. You know, those people that are in the chat is a bonus that are adding to this conversation. Yeah. So thank you, everybody. I uh, hope to see you next week. Uh, anything else you guys wanted to say? Look, look forward to the next one. Yep. Oh, yeah. Next week, uh, we're going to also have Christopher next week. And we have something for... The uh, girl power, some ladies are going to join us uh, in a couple of weeks too. Awesome. Uh, some girls visualize the data and women visualizations that we were, we're thinking about. Um, so keep in touch and hope to see you next week at 3 at 3. 3 at 3. See you. See you. Thank you. Bye. Good job, guys. Yay.